Welcome into Chat Sports. Harrison Graham and Chase Sr. A little Any Given Thursday for you guys. College football edition. We're going to preview the Cotton Bowl CFP semifinal number one. The Alabama Crimson Tide against the Cincinnati Bearcats who of course become the first group of five program to make the college football playoff. This game will be on New Year's Eve, December 31st, 3.30 Eastern time in Arlington, Texas. And Chase... Stage is set. The Bearcats get their chance to represent the group of five. By the way, should mention the only unbeaten team in the college football playoff. And Cincinnati the last two years, basically unbeatable. And yep. I think it's important to note that Cincinnati against Georgia in that bowl game last year should have defeaten the Georgia Bulldogs. And that game went down to the wire. And now you got Cincy repping the group of six squads, trying to prove that they are legit and that they can hang with Nick Saban's Alabama Crimson Tide. I think this matchup is absolutely fascinating. I think that Cincinnati is getting disrespected by being 14-point underdogs. Here's what this game comes down to for me in short. Which Alabama, Harrison, are we going yeah. to get? Are we going to get the Alabama team that lost to Texas A&M? that really had to eke out a win against Auburn and didn't play well and was Jekyll and Hyde all throughout this year? Or are we going to get the Alabama team that blew the doors off of Georgia, made their historic defense look like some scrub defense, came back from 10 nothing, lit the world on fire offensively? It was kind of a Doug Marone, Bill O'Brien statement game, and Bryce Young locked up the Heisman. If the Alabama team that plays against Georgia shows up against Cincinnati, it could be a long day. But I think Cincinnati is well coached enough by Luke Fickle, and I think they have enough elite players on both sides of the ball to be able to keep it tough with Alabama. I want to know, too, can Cincinnati represent the G5, G6 well? Can they make a statement? Can they not get blown out? If Cincinnati gets blown out in this game, then I think people are going to say this is why they don't belong in the playoff. This is why a one or two loss Power 5 program is more deserving to get in. So Cincinnati isn't just playing for Cincinnati. They're playing for UCF. They're playing for Boise State. They're playing for these programs that just want a foot in the door and haven't been able to get one over uh, the last several years. So we'll see if they're able to do that. Uh, I do think we're on the same page here, Chase. If Bama plays their A game, Cincinnati won't beat them. But how often have they played their A game? Three times this year? I mean, Bama's been very beatable at times throughout their season, so we'll see what shakes out. You did mention they are almost two touchdown favorites uh, during the uh, uh, during the Cotton Bowl. I think, what, 13 and a half points? Do we have the, the, the spread on this 13 one? 13 and a half, 14. Uh, Jeremy, it's fluctuated 14 right now yeah. as we sit. Uh, 58 is the over-under, uh, by the way, as well. From a betting perspective, I think that's a big number. Now, it is possible that Bama is just like – we got a month to prepare. Nick Saban with a month. That's that's a big advantage, Alabama. They might come out and Let's win not this disrespect game. Luke Fickle, Forty-two though. to ten, but yeah, we shouldn't you know? disrespect Fickle. I mean, they've earned the they, they've earned the right to be here with how they've played the last couple of years. I think this is a legitimate top five team the last two seasons, and that's why they get their chance against Alabama. So who you got? Bama, Cincinnati, Penn Comet, who you picking in this college football playoff semifinal? If you think it's going to be the Crimson Tide type Bama, if you think it's going to be the Bearcats type CIN, go ahead and get your votes in right now. Let's take a look at these quarterbacks here, Chase, because obviously both are excellent. Bryce Young going to win the Heisman Trophy, but Desmond Ritter, a four-year starter who is a really good scrambler as well, especially this year, really started to use his legs more. Two really good quarterbacks, obviously advantage Bryce Young, but don't sleep on Desmond Ritter and his abilities either. No, he's won a bunch of games. He's been at Cincinnati for five years. I do want to pivot back to Bryce Young. I don't think he's getting talked about enough as being probably the face of college football. If he was draft eligible, I think he'd be going number one yep. over guys like Aiden Hutchinson out of Michigan Completely and agree. Kayvon Thibodeau out of Oregon. Bryce Young has been that good. And against Georgia, he was carving them up after he was able to settle into that game. Took some pressure early, and then once he was able to find a groove, him and Bill O'Brien were on the right page. I mean, 43 touchdowns, four picks this year, a quarterback rating of 175 and a half. But do not sleep on Desmond Ritter because Alabama hasn't faced a lot of quality quarterbacks like him. Yeah. Look, do not sleep on Cincinnati. Do not sleep 
sweep on the American Athletic Conference. This has been a program that's had a ton of success over time. Going back to Brian Kelly, even before that, the American Athletic Conference has boosted a lot of legitimate squads. Going back to Teddy Bridgewater and Louisville, when they were able to take down some legitimate opponents at that time, it's a pretty good conference. Cincinnati's a really good team. Alabama has their work cut and out for them. And you pose the question, is Desmond Ritter better than Stetson Bennett? I yeah. think the answer I is yes. Is. Now, yeah. I, I, I think that like Stetson Bennett, he's a guy that – is in his comfort zone when Cincinnati's playing from ahead because that's what they're used to do, doing. They're, he's not like Bryce Young where he can hit you with 14 points in the matter of three minutes of game time, but I think he's more explosive as a runner. I think he can make bigger plays with his arm as well. He's definitely more experienced than Bennett is, uh, so I think he gives you a little bit more of a dynamic option uh, against that Bama defense that had their way with Bennett as he threw three picks in the SEC championship game. More to break down in this matchup, but... Hey, we're taking over YouTube when it comes to college football uh, news and rumors and videos as a whole. Suck it, J-Boy. Subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. I'm kidding. J-Boy seems like a good dude. Subscribe. More videos on college football over the next several weeks. Uh, we'll come back to this, Jeremy. Let's talk more about this matchup between Alabama and Cincinnati. I do want to briefly mention, too, no John Mechie. Uh, Jamison Williams obviously going to be a big focus, uh, Chase, now that Mechie is out. Obviously, Williams is more than capable on his own to have a big game, but if you're Cincinnati, now you can maybe double this cat and see if someone else can beat you. I don't know. Is it me or did Jamison Williams last week and all throughout this year look like a Henry Ruggs type of player or a Jalen Waddle? He really does look like a Jalen so Waddle in Jamison Williams' body type, and he's had a marvelous year. It's not just what he did against George. Georgia, 68 receptions, 1,400 plus yards, 15 touchdowns, average yards per catch, plus 21. Whew. So he has put up monster numbers. He's a big chain mover, and this wait, guy's wait, wait. a big play he threat anytime he puts he his just, hands on the ball. He just scored again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, his, his speed, his breakaway speed really is unbelievable. Uh, Kobe Bryant, uh, not the Kobe Bryant, uh, not the late great Kobe Bryant, but defensive back Kobe Bryant for Cincinnati could be tasked with guarding Williams some. You're talking about a really good player uh, that's going to get drafted in his own right. Three picks, 11 pass breakups. I don't know if you want to ask anybody for Cincinnati to play man coverage on Jamison Williams, but with John Mechie out, that allows you to be more versatile in your looks for the Bearcats. You can play some heavy cover too. You can play some man on some certain downs. You can blitz a little bit more because really Williams is the only major, major playmaker now that John Mechie is out here. Yeah, Chase. Kobe Bryant is going to be a draft eligible player who's going to be able to get picked probably on the second day of the NFL draft. I yep. think he is that good. Maybe a second, third, fourth rounder, depending on how he plays against Alabama. You know it's also going to be crucial too, without John Mechie. It's really the safety play of Cincinnati. You cannot let Jamison no. Williams take the top off of this defense, and you can't let him spring free. So you know that Alabama and their pregame routine, they're going to try to get those safeties that come up to the line of scrimmage and if that's the case Bryce Young will throw the ball over you and I think you could afford to play too deep if you're uh, Cincinnati because uh, Bama doesn't run the ball extremely well this year which uh, uh, should help the Bearcats out now you didn't want to mention Chase Bill O'Brien Doug Marone have been able to own Georgia so yeah how can Cincinnati what can they learn from that I, here? I just thought this was an underrated talked about point during that Georgia game. Didn't it feel, and we kind of talked about this as we were watching the game together, taking down some sluggies, <laughs> Bill O'Brien, Doug Marone, kind of a statement game for them dominated against the line Georgia. Of yeah. They dominated the line of scrimmage, did Alabama. That's all thanks to Doug Marone. And yes, he had some bumpy head coaching tenures with what the Buffalo Bills and the Jacksonville Jaguars. But as a college offensive line coach, this is why Nick Saban is so great. How many guys has he had go to other premier college coaching jobs? and then he just plugs and plays all of his coaches, yep. which is really unbelievable. And Bill O'Brien, the jury was out for him as an offensive coordinator. He looked like an NFL head coach last week against a very good and vaunted Georgia defense. And by the way, this was a week after they got pushed around by Auburn. Yep. So to get that group ready up front to dominate the line of scrimmage against a better defensive front in Georgia, exactly right. really impressive work by that coaching staff. Bet US is the place to go if you want to bet on this matchup. So go to chatsports.com slash bet. Use our promo code chat125. Put down 100 bucks, you get 125 for free when you sign up with Bet US. And Bama, two touchdown favorites. I mean, it's a big number. I think since Cincinnati is capable of covering that. That over-under feels kind of right. I could see this being a, 
you know, a 34 to 24 type of game, which would be right at 58 points. So that's a trickier one to me. I, I might take the Bearcats to cover. You can also bet on the Orange Bowl. I really like Michigan getting seven and a half. And if you're watching live, we're going to break down this matchup as well later on. How about that over under, Chase? 44 and a half? That's low. That's low, Two man. Two really good defensive Two teams really good defenses. excellent defensive lines and a lot of pro prospects on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, slower tempos, too, so yep. you're not going to see as many possessions. Go bet on these games and all of bowl season matchups. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code chat125 to get that deposit bonus. We can't do this preview of Bama Cincinnati without talking about maybe the best defensive player outside of Aiden Hutchinson in college football. And he's right up there with Hutchinson. Will Anderson, the season this cat had, 91 tackles, 15 and a half sacks, 28 and a half tackles for loss, 38 uh, QB pressures. He's been unbelievable. He's not even draft eligible. It's a redshirt freshman. Yeah, a lot of people believe that if he were draft eligible, he could go number one ahead yep. of the likes of Aiden Hutchinson, ahead of the likes of Kayvon Thibodeau. And, of course, it's a weak quarterback class. But Will Anderson Jr. is a game wrecker. He's a game breaker. He's one of, if not the best defensive players in the nation. And you talk about the stats, Harrison. They really are stupid. 15 and a half sacks, 28 and a half tackles for loss. <laughs> That's unbelievable. This this guy by himself can change the complexion of this game. And honestly, I think he should have been a Heisman finalist. I agree with the sentiment that Eden Hutchinson should have been in there. But in a weak year for quarterbacks, why can't you throw him in the mix? I Bryce think he Young thought he that. should be there. And yep. I think he's absolutely right. Statistically, he was right there with Hutch. One of the best defensive campaigns yeah. that we've seen ever. Yeah, and, and you already mentioned it. It could have been the number one pick if he's eligible. It's crazy. Bama, if Bryce Young and uh, Will Anderson were draft eligible, might go one and two yeah. in whatever order uh, you want to break down. And they're, uh, they're still just second-year players in college, so it's pretty uh, unreal. Cincinnati's got some dudes too, though. Alec Pierce is a player to watch for on offense. Not quite a Jamison Williams explosiveness. but More seven, of a Cooper Cup. Yeah, 17 game. yards a catch, though. He can he can make some plays as well. Uh, I see what you did Not there. Not just because he's 867 yards. Eight touchdowns. I think if you're Cincinnati, honestly, as we kind of get to the end of this preview here, Chase, you have to weather the first quarter. Yeah. You can't get to the end of the first quarter and you're down 14, 17, nothing, because then you're done. Yeah. You're done. you got to get your feet into this game early because uh, we've seen that be in games with Alabama before. They can snowball on you if you get down early. So Cincinnati really needs to just hang around in the first quarter, first half, get to the locker room while it's still a game at halftime, let Luke Fickle make those adjustments and try to go, uh, try to make a run in the second half, which is why we ask you this question. Can Cincinnati keep it close against Alabama? Type C for close or type B if you think it's going to get a, be a blowout. Let us know in the comments what's going to happen in this matchup.